Today, I'm going to show you three ways you can use Machiavellian tactics in your life right now. The Prince was written and published by Niccolo Machiavelli in 1532. Ever since then, this book has gone on to influence many people, such as politicians, businessmen, rappers, and your neighborhood thug. This book has amazing and heartless advice which has helped people reach their short-term and long-term strategic goals. When learning about Machiavelli, you will be able to strengthen your strategic mind. Any goal you set out to achieve will be accomplished because you're going to have a strategic mindset. And since most of your peers only know Machiavelli by name, you're going to have a huge advantage over them. Alright, and let's move on to the first Machiavellian tactic. It's better to be feared than loved. You have to remember one thing, people are fickle. When things are going your way, they'll support you. But as soon as things go south, they're going to abandon your ass. And love between people can be fragile. They can be ruined by simple things like rumors circulating. But the fear of someone never relaxes because the thought of punishment will always linger in the back of people's minds. And when it comes to love, being loved depends on the people. But yet, being feared solely depends on you. And at the same time, don't be going around having people fear you and hate you. You want to keep a proper balance. It's okay for them to fear you, but not hate you. And I can attest to this Machiavellian tactic because I've seen it in effect in my life. I used to work on a hospital unit that was run by many managers over the years. And there were two managers that really stick out for this Machiavellian tactic. Manager A was able to run the unit very sharply because everybody was afraid of her. They made sure to do their work perfectly and they were always on their toes because if you did anything incorrectly for manager A, there would be punishment. And under manager A, the unit was run efficiently. There was very little problems and the unit budget always was under control. When manager A moved on, we were able to get manager B. Everybody loved manager B. He spoiled all the staff on the unit. And as a result, the staff members started to get lazy. They weren't afraid of any of the consequences if they were cutting corners in their work. And Manager B did nothing to stop his staff from cutting corners and being lazy in their work. As time went on, the unit was much less efficient. Staff members were not caring about the budget and as a result, the budget grew out of control. But yet, Manager B did nothing because he did not want any of the staff members to dislike him. Upper upper management did not like Manager B's style and as a result, they let him go. Now, I'm not saying put fear in everybody's heart, but when you are leading an organization, you do want it to be run effectively and efficiently. And sometimes that can only be done by putting fear in people under you. Because if you want to be liked like Manager B, people are going to take advantage of you and that could lead to your own ruin and maybe even damage your reputation as a manager or as a leader. All right, now onto the second Machiavellian tactic. Be very careful with the people you choose to advise you. One thing you always have to keep in mind is you don't want to work with people who have their own agendas and only want to work for themselves. These are the people you can never trust because when it seems like they're working for you, in reality, they're not. The best way to keep these people at bay and loyal to you is simply by sharing all the benefits and adversity with them. If there's a huge project going on, bring those individuals in to help you with the project so that they will not only benefit from all the good things that will happen, but also suffer from any of the consequences because with that experience together, that's going to bring solidarity. And as a result, they're going to be distracted from their own agendas because they're going to be so busy helping you, you know, going through the highs and lows that they won't have any time for their own personal agendas and projects. I remember this one time when I got hired into a startup and to be honest, I was going to bring my own agenda. 
I couldn't really see myself working for them, but I thought this would be a great experience to not only plant my ideas, but also to really work for myself. However, one of the co-founders was much wiser and smarter than I was. He brought me on to a huge project where we were going to develop a business in a new city. And this required a lot of time and I was grinding it out with them. And as a result, I had no time to pay any attention to my agenda. And at the same time, sharing those experiences with that project, with that co-founder, made me very loyal to him. And now for the last Machiavellian tactic, withstanding life's challenges. One thing that I cannot stress enough for everybody is, don't put your trust in chance. Because we all know when it comes to life, things change and happen randomly. One way to really withstand life's challenges is to be adaptable. So depending on the situation, you have to really find what's appropriate. If a situation requires you to be patient, be patient. When an urgent decision comes, you have to be decisive. And in times of change and uncertainty, you might have to be cautious. Really, you have to behave accordingly to the situation because you never know what's gonna come up and you know yourself best. Bruce Lee has a quote that really encompasses this Machiavellian tactic. Bruce Lee says, you must be shapeless, formless, like water. When you pour water in a cup, it becomes the cup. When you pour water in a bottle, it becomes the bottle. When you pour water in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Water can drip and it can crash. Become like water, my friend. All right, those are three Machiavellian tactics that you can use in your life right now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment which Machiavellian tactic that you liked. And if you read the book, maybe give me some examples of other tactics that you enjoyed. Now, until next time, guys, I'll see you later. And remember, let's get wiser.